Well, welcome to the analytics dashboard course. I'm really excited to have all of you guys here today. Well, a little bit about myself, as you all know, I'm Annie Cushing. That is what you are going to learn in this seminar. Just to give you a quick overview, we're going to start. Today, it's going to be all Google Analytics. And just so you know, because I don't work for Google, I'm not compelled to take you know, like uh, a dispassionate academic approach to teaching you Google Analytics. I will be brutally honest. Um, I will be sharing from my experience, and uh, I'll just say that right off the bat. Like there are some reports that I look at, and I think, what a waste, you know. Uh, I said, what, what would you do with this? And some of them, they really are just, they're like chart junk and stuff. But I can be, I will be very candid with you while at the same time explaining, this has been my experience and there might be some reports where, you know, I thought they weren't really useful and then I do a lot of analytics audits, so I do a lot of forensic analysis and there are times that reports that I thought were kind of useless really came in handy when doing forensic analysis. But so today is going to be a grand overview of Google Analytics and I'm going to touch on uh, Excellent Analytics, the free plugin that I uh, sent you guys a link to. One thing about the plugins, you don't have to follow along. So if you didn't install them on your laptops, even if you did, uh, my experience has been, but even people who started to follow along, then they decided, you know what, I'm just going to watch. Because I think if you watch and you take it all in, you'll get more of that 100-foot view. And then you'll be able to take it and, you know, apply it to your specific needs. Whereas if you're, like, focused on, you know, where is that knob that I need to turn, you might miss the bigger picture. So we're going to touch on Excellent Analytics. Uh, it is free, and there's a reason it's free. I'm very, very grateful that it's free. I think it's a great, it's like that first hit of crack, you know, to get someone addicted. And then you're like, actually, that's really bad stuff. It's polluted. But it's just, you know, it's, it's free. It hasn't been updated in several years. I still thought it was worthy to show people because one, if someone's on like a shoestring budget and all you can afford is free, it's better than, you know, a poke in the eye with a sharp stick. But, and also I really like the interface. So the interface, I, I like that the two plugins I'm showing you have a really solid interface. And so like when I started working with the API, it was in Google Docs. And I actually had you actually have to like piece together the calls and there's no interface. So it's not quite, it's a little more intimidating, but anyway, and then tomorrow is going to be all Excel. We're going to be taking a data dump. I still have to, there was something wrong with one of the Excel files. So I'm going to tweak it tonight and I'll send you guys the link, the Dropbox link. But I just want to make sure the last time I ran it, one of the Excel files was corrupted. And I'm really hoping I identify this, especially now switching to Mac and stuff. But anyway, so tomorrow is going to be like just an overview of Excel. And we're going to be taking you know, specific smaller chunks of data. And that you will be following along. I'll take, you know, you'll have like little chunks of data and I'll say, okay, we're going to build this with this. We're going to build this with this. And just so you know, I'm going to be demonstrating everything for in both the PC and the Mac. And for the PC, I'm going to demonstrate 2013 and 2010. So we, everyone's covered. Um, and then, and then the third day is going to be advanced Excel stuff. Uh, that's where you're going to learn how to build interactive charts. Just to let you know, with that, you're not going to follow along. I tried that, and it really, it, the interactive charts are such that it kind of takes some getting used to. But as you'll see in this course, not only, and you'll, you'll also see it throughout your workbook, I have 
tons of resources, not just the workbook itself, which has screenshots and stuff. So my, my training approach is very much kind of like my mothering, you know, like take you by the hand. It's not so scary. Like this seems intimidating, but you know, here are like really stupid ways to remember things. I'm not afraid to embarrass myself, but anyway, so, uh, but you're just going to watch me do it. But then I have tons of tutorials online and, um, and that will just be a matter of getting in there and doing it. And as you get in there and do it, it will become intuitive. Then we're gonna close up with uh, a demonstration of analytics canvas. So that's, that's your next three days. Without further ado, let's jump into Google Analytics. Now I'm gonna take kind of a different approach to introducing you guys to Google Analytics. So what most trainers will do, and the jury's out on, you know, still out on if this is effective, but what most trainers will do is they'll go through the interface and introduce you to all the different reports. I will do that. However, my biggest concern when people are learning Google Analytics is most people think, this here, this is Google Analytics. Like if you open up, if you click on each of these and we'll get into the interface, but they tend to think like, okay, these are the reports that are available. And these, you should think of these as just templates. These are just templates that Google has given you to kind of get you started so that you have something to work with, but they can be very limiting. And when you're dealing with, data from a business perspective, which is going to be a huge emphasis in this seminar, these aren't always going to take you where you wanna go. So I'm gonna start off with deconstructing a report and letting you see under the hood so that as we're going through all of these, you'll have an understanding of what each of those you know, bells and whistles mean. And it's also important for you to understand under the hood for when we get to the API. Because when we get to the API, you're gonna really need to understand the difference between a dimension and a metric, and which dimensions work together, which metrics work together, that kind of thing. And the user interface, so this is the user interface here as opposed to the API. So I might refer to this as the UI or the website versus the API. Uh, so, so that's how we're going to start, and that's the reasoning for it. So first of all, the way to get to those is you want to click on customization up here. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm in my demo account, so I don't have any custom reports. In my main account, I have two primary accounts where I have my site and client sites. And these are loaded with custom reports. Uh, you'll just see custom reports all down the, the left sidebar. One caveat with custom reports, and we'll get to this a little bit later, but you do get more data sampling. So if you're a site with a very high volume, like, um, like your site, then anytime you apply a custom report or any customizations, you're going to get sampling. Whereas with the standard reports, those are the only reports that there's no sampling applied to. Uh, so if you can get what you need from a standard report, it's good to go with that. You're just not always going to get what you need. And there are ways to get around the sampling issue with uh, Analytics Canvas. So, all right, so let's look up here, see where it says custom reports. To create a custom report, you're just going to click on this, new custom report. And let me explain what all of this means. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do when creating a custom report is give it an intuitive title. Now when you start really filling up your palette with custom reports, those intuitive titles are really important. Like you don't want it to just be like, you know, report five or whatever, because you won't know what it means. And, uh, and then this report tab. So when, when they added these, I thought, well, actually, they, these might have been since Urchin. But anyway, but I thought that these would be really useful because, you know, I have clients who, like, 
they might have they might be getting organic services, but also social media. This is when I worked for an agency. And so I thought what I'd be able to do is have an individual tab for each like department, but they're not as useful as you might think. And for this reason, any filter you apply to a customer report, and we'll get into filters in a minute, is going to apply to each of the tabs. So if you want to focus on organic for one, you're going to have to apply a filter, which I'll, I'll demonstrate. This says via medium equals organic. Well, any other tabs are going to have that same filter. So again, warned you ahead of time. I, I, I want to get anything that I learned the hard way, if I can uh, help you pre prevent that, great. So. As a result, I just haven't found much use for the tabs, but you know, your mileage may vary. We will see when we get to the standard reports where these tabs show up, but what Google Analytics does is they'll have multiple tabs and that's one, that's one other reason I prefer the custom reports because let's pull up a standard report in Google Analytics. We'll just look at this. These are different tabs. So, you know, under site usage, it has uh, it has sessions. Which, by the way, Google Analytics just changed this, and it was for the purpose of messing up my workbooks. Visits just changed to sessions, and visitors changed to users. The reason for that is they wanted to integrate their app interface with the regular interface. So if I say visits, it's only because I've been at this a really long time and they've always been visits. I mean sessions and visitors, I mean users. So that's whatever. Anyway, so we have sessions, pages per session, you know, just like the basic overview. And then they put all the goal data in one tab and then all the e-commerce data in one tab. So when I'm using a standard report, I don't like having everything split up in tabs because I usually want like some combination. Like I want, you know, uh, sessions, bounce rate. Uh, my gravitational pull is definitely toward sessions, bounce rate, uh, total goal completions, and money revenue. So the way Google Analytics works is when you go to print this and you know I'll get into the whole um, user interface but when you go to print this or you know uh, export it to CSV it's only going to export what is actually showing. So if you want all four, if you want like a couple rows from this uh, or a couple columns excuse me from site usage a column from goal set one and a column from e-commerce, you're going to have to export all three of those and then marry them in Excel. So it's a pain. That's one more benefit to a custom report because when I'm creating a custom report, I only put in there what I absolutely need, what I care about, and then the rest I leave out. But I just wanted to show you guys how this translates in a standard report.